You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyon-Rowe and Lee Robertson. Well, I said it might not be much to look at, but it's a really comfortable place to sit. Nice. Ooh. Well, hello and welcome to Chewing the Cud. What do you have for us this week in the showbiz, young Lee? I have a Scooby-Doo, Mike. You've taken me oh, you've taken me by surprise there. I haven't touched you. <laughs> and with the stinks that are coming out of your backside today, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I'm unwell. <laughs> I've got you're, gastric distress. Your distress is causing me distress. <sighs> well, I do recall now that I have a story about a, a breakfast television presenter who's not very happy. That's all I'm giving you. Oh, 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 oh. That's all you're giving me. <laughs> Keep your cheeks together then, please. On screen now, you can see all the ways of getting hold of us. It's at The Cud TV on social media, where you can follow us. The Cud.tv for the website, and on YouTube and podcast services. Look for Chewing The Cud and hit subscribe. And there's the names of people who have interacted with us on social media. Their names scroll across the bottom of the screen. We go over to Mike and the buzz. <laughs> Have you ever made a noise you didn't expect? Hello. <laughs> Aya. Today, in here. Oh, well, we expect you to be flatulent, though. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I, make, I make noises. That I you make don't noises. Expect, that you don't expect to come out of yourself? Yeah. Like what? Like, um, deep masculine noises. <laughs> <laughs> no, I expect that to come out of you. No. Um, well, this is a story about the Voyager 1 space probe. I'm bored already. Why, why are you bored already? It's about space. No, it's about a, a space probe. Go on. Go right, on. so this is the Voyager 1 space probe that was supposed to be de decommissioned over 45 years ago. It's still floating around in space. still floating around, still, still ploughing its way through the solar system, right? Still transmitting data. Okay. Right? Um, but what's happened is it started to suddenly transmit a really strange noise. Now you're interested, aren't you? <laughs> you see? Like, yeah, but interested. if it's just, an, it's just like a machine noise now, it's like somebody going... Hello. <laughs> then now I'm interested. Right. So they're not able to give us the exact noise, as in they can't share it with us. Why? For security reasons. Because it's a rubbish noise. It's just like a, a bolt going, ee, ee, isn't it? Well, it wouldn't make that noise in space. Because there's no, there's no sound in space. Yes, there is. No, there's not. It's a vacuum. If I was in space yeah. and I was talking, you'd hear me. No. It's the sound. No, no, no. Because what the sound, way sound works is it's your mouth causing... Pressure waves in the air mm -hmm. hitting your eardrum and vibrating. Mm -hmm. There is no air for those pressure to, waves to hit. But they speak on the television when they're in space. They're inside spaceships. Yeah. Where there's air. Yeah. The Voyager 1 spaceship, space probe, has no air. It is in the vacuum of space. In space, no one can hear you scream. It's quite a famous quote. All right. You can't hear it, so it won't be a bolt rattling. It's all right. I don't agree with you, but that's fine. That's okay. You'd be wrong. If a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody around to hear it, does it still make a noise? Yes, it does. But but if nobody can hear it, if nobody's there to hear it, does it make a noise? Yes. It might not, though. It will do. It might require it... somebody to actually hear it for it to... to... And this stone keeps away from <laughs> tigers. Because <laughs> you don't see any tigers around here. Must work. And what's the sound of one hand clapping? That's the sound of one hand clapping. And you'd hear that in space as well. No, you couldn't, because it's in a vacuum again. Oh, let's just get on with the story. Right, well, the, the, <coughs> it's, heard, it's heard a weird noise. They're a bit concerned about it because they don't know where this noise is coming from. But they won't tell us what the noise is like. No. And that's the end of the story. Yeah. So well, that's it, boring it space be, people. It could be aliens. We don't know. Or it could just be a squeaky, squeaky valve. It won't valve. be a squeaky valve or something. It could be! Because it can't make a noise in space because there's a vacuum. Oh, my God. Right, moving on. <laughs> talk about we're going to talk about your favourite place in the world, <laughs> Asda. Other supermarkets are available. Other supermarkets are available with toilet facilities. <laughs> yes, most of them come with toilet facilities as well. Yes, just so you don't have to. Anyway, um, so a man has started saving thirty-five pounds a month mm. by squatting in Asda. I told you we were never to bring this up ever again. I'm not bringing this up. <laughs> this is an actual story. Oh, he's quite attractive. All oh, right, that, that, now we're interested. <laughs> What's he doing? Is he, is, he, is he curling one out? He's squatting in Asda because um, 
you sort of Martin Lewis say that your know, supermarkets put things at eye level that are the most expensive. Okay. Because eye level is by level. Mm-hmm. Plus or so. Um and what he's doing is just by crouching down, he's automatically seeing the cheaper products. So he's not going automatically for the oh I need Paxo, he's going for the cheap stage onion stuffing instead. So he's saving himself money that way because he's not tempted to buy the more expensive thing. Just by squatting. Okay. Yeah. Not the story you were expecting, is it? No. 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 Bit dull then, really. Yeah, so um But you know, well done him. Well done him, yeah. Uh, would you like to know where he lives? Yeah. Yeah, Hull. Ooh, is that far away? Can people hear you there? Is it in a vacuum? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, on, on the normal shelf, where you normally see, a tub of yoghurt would cost £3. Ooh. Right? When you crouch down, it would be £1.65. Magically, the price lowers. No, because the, the, lo- the lower you get. The cheaper get to the product is £1.65. Okay. So, a plain yoghurt. Mm-hmm. Three pound, one pound sixty five on the shelf down. Yeah. So yeah, squatting. <laughs> it's a craze. It's a craze. Sweeping the nation. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> squatting in Asda. Yeah. Mm. See, I wasn't talking about taking a shit in the aisle. No. Right. Um, and if you want to just interact with us on social media, it's at the Cud TV. Our website is the <coughs> TV, and of course on YouTube, we're under Chewing the Cud. And now we're going to go to story of the week. Okay. Now this is a story about pussy. Not not that kind. I didn't assume that it was. I could see in your mind. Mm. You're holding the fart again, aren't you? No. Are you not? No, I'm not. Oh dear. Can't um, hold them in. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the prolapse. <laughs> um, so this is a story about a house that's on sale for £595,000. £600,000. Wow. Sure. Right? It comes with a cat who doesn't want to leave. Right, so it's part of the basically you're going to buy the house, right? And it comes with its own cat. Okay. Yeah. So this is in Little Back near Whitby. 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 Yes. That that irritates you. No, it? I don't mind that. Do you know? Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I have been, I have been to Whitby. Because another way I say thesaurus irritates you. That is irritating. Because yeah, it's a fun word to say. Um, so the cat comes as goes as they please, right? And so they've had to list it in the sale that this cat will continually come into your house. Be aware. Right, it's not being sold with the house. It's not the house's cat. It's a cat that likes to go in there. Have they not heard of the RSPCA? It's an owned cat. It's not a stray cat. Who's the, who's the owned by? Another person. We'll take it back. But it still comes back into the house. Take it back again. <laughs> <laughs> so you're continually returning a cat. And every time it turns up, electrocute it. It will soon. <laughs> a little trail. Of those little cat treats uh-huh. into a sack okay. full of bricks. Okay. And sits in there, mm-hmm. tie the neck of the sack uh-huh. in the canal. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not abuse cats. I ju- No, I just kind of think that's just a, you know, get rid of it. Get rid of it. <laughs> I think... Put it in a cage. Get rid of it. Take it somewhere. Take it away. <laughs> Take it away. Take it away. But it comes back. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, but then, then if the every... cat comes back, I'll the give very it a reason day. not to come back. The cat comes back. They thought it was a gunner. The cat came back. Give it a reason day. not to come back. Like your foot up its ass. <laughs> Please do not kick animals, <laughs> people at home. I just think that's a terrible excuse. Well, let's say, well, I want, I want half off that house then. I want half off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give half off if you've got a cat that keeps coming through. Yeah, well, it's not my. What's that? My fault. Hmm? Half off, and then I'll buy it. And then I'll buy the um, house then. And then I'll it's then there'll be a for you, don't buy the house. <laughs> and there'll be a new patio with a cat shape underneath it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, see, but I thought you were a fan of cats. I don't like cats. You don't like cats. No. All cats. All cats. All cats are disgusting. I just don't like them. Should be gone. I don't say gone. I just don't want them near me. Okay, I agree. So I think that all cats away from me. Don't you do that because that's that's not a cat. That's a that that is the Dalai Lama of cats. Cat. It, but it's a peaceful cat. You can put it back on that shelf. <laughs> well. So yeah. Somebody's not had the rusks today, have they? Is that because I'm young? It's because you're a childish twat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fartzilla. <laughs> um, but that's all from the buzz this week. Was that, was that whole cat story just so that you could chuck that cat over the <laughs> no. thing? No. 
You did you orchestrate that? No, I didn't. I, I, yes, actually, what I did was I wrote a, a, an article for the Metro, <laughs> got it published on the Metro's <laughs> website. One point past you. Right. Under know the, how much you hate that cat. <laughs> under the pen name of Ellen Scott. <laughs> I just, I just, just, I know how much you hate it, but the viewers love that cat. They think it's beautiful. All right, okay, let's Who move on. Who likes that cat? Let's move on, Mike. Okay, I'll move on then. Because <clears throat> coming up next, we have Lee and the Showbiz. You're watching Chew the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's get ready for the deep sci fart machine himself, Lee and the Showbiz News. Drag, Mike. It's everywhere, isn't it? It is. As soon as you turn on the television, there's a drag queen there. Mm hmm. They've, they've taken over the world. Well, mm, kind of. Well, ITV, they're not, they want a bit of that action. They want a slice of that pie. Really? They ITV do. want to make more money on something. Yeah. Well, so off the back of um, Ant and Dec dressing up as drag queens on their, is it Saturday Takeaway? I have no idea. I don't watch it. Uh, we've got a picture of them here. So, the, so they, they, to be fair, they did look quite good. It's almost like they had professional makeup professional artists. Professional makeup artists. Do their so they makeup. were done over by the drag queens. They were done over. They were done over. They, they were made over by the drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay. Um, and it was kind of like a, a whole kind of shtick. There's another picture we've got of, of with the winners from Drag Race um, UK. Um, so you've got um, Crystal Versace, Anton Deck, um, and then that's... Um, Lawrence Cheney. Lawrence Cheney and um, the Vivian. Uh-huh. So, apparently... <laughs> Cold with the Vivian. I'm sorry. Everyone right. has their favourites. Um, <laughs> it's like Lawrence Cheney and the Vivian. Vivian. Um, so, ITV, that was a massive ratings mm -hmm. win for them. So, yeah. they, they have decided that they're going to do their own drag race style show. It's going to be called Queen of the Night. Queen of the Night! Not after the... Um, <laughs> not... <laughs> Not after the um, Whitney Houston song. Um, <laughs> what's this? What's going on? So basically, what's going to happen is celebrities are given a drag makeover. Okay. And then they're going to perform before a panel of judges. And then a studio audience will vote for their favourite. Okay. Um, and at the end of the show, one will be, be, be crowned a winner. So each celebrity will be paired with their own drag mentor. Um, who will then kind of put them into drag and set them tasks and stuff, whether that's lip syncing, mm -hmm. impressions, comedy. Comedy? Comedy. Comedy. That's where they put them on a huge rock and then hurl them into the air, um, telling jokes. Um, so, yeah, so <laughs> the Sun has said, because so it must be true, um, that it's set to be one of the funniest shows this year. Uh -huh. Producers can't wait to see the acts perform. They're staying tight-lipped about the judges. Um, and the contestants, but those, the, <laughs> but those who were considered would would leave jaws hanging. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that that is coming at some point this year. Um, so it's celebrity drag race. It's celebrity drag race. Okay. It's it's, it's with, um, with a, a premium rate numbers of text. Quite possibly, it's what? Yeah, it is. Isn't it? So they ripped it off. Bet Rue's not happy about that. Rue would probably say you could have my format for X. Yeah. You're right. Oh, okay. Like so Paul's not going to make money out of something. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're wearing heels. I'm sure I can make money out of that. Mm, she was on that show as well. She was the announcer of it. Um, yeah, yeah, it'll be well, a deal. Mm, good for them. Um, so, yeah. On to um, a celebrity who's not happy. Oh, no. She's not happy. Oh, no. Lorraine Kelly. I oh, don't care. The, the actress that plays Lorraine Kelly. Yeah. She's not happy. Um, <laughs> she's now, not, she's, she's not, not herself. She's not herself. And neither Lorraine of them Kelly. are happy. <laughs> yes. Um, so there she is being not happy. Um, she has spoken out. <laughs> when was that photo taken? Because the jumper says 1980s. <laughs> the face says quite recently. I, it could have been anywhere. Anywhere in the past three decades. Um, she's not happy. Um, and then this is, to me, it kind of seems like, well, it was about 20 years ago. Okay. Why are you not happy? So do you remember Bo Selector? I do. I actually um, called my car Bo. Did you? Because it was a selector edition. So. Oh. Um, well, she was famously lampooned on um, Bo Selector um, and has spoken about how at the time she, she wasn't happy. Okay. She didn't find it very funny. It, I mean, this is, this is, I mean, if we're talking, <laughs> if we're talking, <laughs> that was because there was a big cackle in my ear. Um, if we're talking about PC 
nowadays, mm -hmm. it didn't. It wasn't politically correct. No, it was. It the was, comedy was very of its time. It was hilarious, in my personal at opinion, time. at the time. Mm -hmm. Less so, so now. It's not aged very well because no. we've become more aware of, yeah, of, of yeah. things. So, so Keith Lemon, before he became um, Keith Lemon... Mm -hmm. Keith Lemon, before he became Keith Lemon? Yeah, well, it made sense out of your head. It didn't did, it? didn't it? Yeah. Lee Francis, who is the guy behind yeah. Keith Lemon, uh -huh. did Bo Selector. And basically what she's, she's saying is she was on a podcast mm -hmm. and she was saying... <laughs> so I, I make, I, the, the stick that he did of, of, of Lorraine was, she was sat in that little chair and she went, I'm Lorraine Curley. Mm -hmm. Can you see me growler? And then opened her legs and there was a little furry bush in between. Yeah. I find that funny. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't. Yeah. Um, and she said, she said, I didn't at the time, I didn't, I didn't complain. I should have, but... I didn't. Yeah. Nowadays, should, to be honest, I never saw it because I didn't watch the show. And I'm thinking, well, why are you complaining? Why are you sad about it? And if you didn't watch it, what's up? That's why you didn't say anything, isn't it? Like, she, what? what? <laughs> um, she went on to kind of say that, that it was her close friend, Craig David, um, was also targeted on post lecture. And again, not, it wasn't fun. I mean, to be fair, it didn't upset him that much because he's... <laughs> <laughs> the gallery have just done the catchphrase in my ear. <laughs> Yes. Um, he didn't obviously say him that much because he's posing with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, it was offensive. He had a piss bag. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah, <laughs> apparently that he put that onto that killing his career for years and he had to go and live somewhere else because well, he people... He killed his career himself by singing shite songs. Yeah. She said, I was actually very, very upset at the portrayal of Craig David because I adore Craig. Mm -hmm. He's like a son I never had. I don't, would never imagine Craig David and Sil and Silla Black. <laughs> That's just my fantasies. But um, <laughs> Craig David and Lorraine as Bezzy. Do you know stuff? I'm just thinking, like a son I've never had. Oh, okay. But not actually like my son. <laughs> she goes on to say, he's the kindest, loveliest man, and that absolutely derailed his career. There's no question of it. Um, so, <sighs> to he sang be a horribly misogynistic song about shagging a woman for a week. Yeah, he did. I mean, some of the stuff in Bo Selector wasn't, you know, Trisha Goddard at the time didn't, she she quite fairly spoke about it, it about perpetuating black stereotypes. Yeah, um, at the time there was a lot of slight uproar about was he being racist because he did a Beyonce skit, he did a Mel B skit, he did a Trisha Goddard skit. It was very much a case of who else are you going at? I don't uh, think there was any celebrity that didn't wasn't fair no. play for him. He very much went after he went everybody. Yeah. Um, but he regardless. did play up to a lot of stereotypes yeah. and stuff. Um, which now, he, which now it, we wouldn't. He wouldn't. And he has apologised. So, yeah. and, and, you know, but this was quite a while ago he apologised. Yeah. yeah and, and kind of moved on. So I kind of, kind of think, why is, it, why is she bringing it up now? It's, <sighs> is, is, is she getting a bit like low in the ratings? Quite possibly, who knows? So, so what does this guy look like? This is Lee Francis. Because, I mean, I personally, I can't stand um, the character that he does. What's Keith he, Lemon. Keith Lemon. It, initially, it was funny. Mm -hmm. 27 years later, I'm like, it's not funny anymore. Do something else. Um, See, I remember Keith Lemon started off... On Bo Selector. Before that. Did he? So oh, he, he did, had a different uh, show and he um, was... Interviewed people on the red carpet. No, even before that. He had a skit show. Did on, he? Right, and it wasn't very popular. It was on real late at night. And Keith Lemon used to um, have really bad jobs, so he'd do, like, installing of the, you know, the posts okay. in, in the floor. Okay. Right, trying to sell that on TV and become a celebrity. I think, did, he, did he used to interview celebrities and put a penis up? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sort um, of thing. And then he went, he went on to do The Bear. Do you remember The Bear? That's P.P. popped up. Yeah. And stuff. Again, hum humour is subjective. Mm-hmm. I'm infantile. <laughs> you are. I find that very funny. You do indeed. Other people, not so much. Yeah. But, you know, Lorraine, get over it. Let's move on to something a bit nicer. Yes, let's. Yeah, Kylie and Jason. Yeah. They're going to reunite. Now, I haven't watched Neighbours. Especially for you. Yes. Oh. Mm. Um, so there's Kylie and Jason as, as Scott and Charlene when they got married. What year was that? That was something like, ooh, ooh, I don't know. Do you know? I want to say 1988. Are you sure? Of oh, 1987. So, so Neighbours has been around since 1985. It started in 1985. Kylie and Jason left the series in 1989. And so Kylie left in 1988. 
Jason left in 1989, and they played Scott and Charlene. Their episode was 1987, Thank so you. they got married in 1987. So this is all around. Was five. Were you five? Were you? No, well, I was four. But yeah. Okay. Well, Neighbours um, is gone. It's good kaput. Uh, bye yeah. bye, Neighbours. Bye bye. Um, because it will be soon. It will be soon. So so Channel Five have kind of said. We ain't going to give you no more money to... Yeah, and so, so that's... ABC in Australia have gone, well, you, there are people buying it, so bye. The thing is is that nobody watches it in Australia. It's not a. It's not something that people watch. It's um, on really early as well. Is it's, it? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's on like, you know, kids' TV is on. Oh. It's on at that sort of time. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so the, Scott and Charlene, the characters, um, this is them in real life. A couple of years ago... Um, she did a, a, a concert in Hyde Park in, in London and he came on to sing. He always does, though. If, he, if he's around and she's there, he, they have to fight him off. No, Jason, not. He's like, go on. Um, they do a bit of a bit of a turn. Mm -hmm. um, so rumour is, is that they are coming back for the final episode. Wow. Um, they um, apparently have been seen filming in a park oh. in... Um, in uh, Cleethorpes? No, they've been seen... <laughs> filming film in Melbourne. In, yeah, in Melbourne. Um, that's that's them. At, so they have kept the cast have kept in touch. This is at Kylie's fiftieth birthday a couple of years ago. That is Guy Pierce who played. Um, who did he play in Neighbours? Paul. No. Um, Paul Daniels. No, <laughs> Paul Daniels. <laughs> that's a magician and he's dead. Um, he no, played. This is the Daniels family, isn't it? That run the Lassiters. Is it? I haven't watched it in a yeah, long time. Because it was time. Helen Daniels that was the oh, grand that died. Been Paul Daniels. Yeah, then. and yes. then her I, I, son. So was... I'm sorry about that. Yeah. 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 Well, Guy Pearce played somebody in Neighbours as well. Paul Daniels. No, he didn't play Paul Daniels. <laughs> Did he play that? He played a person, but Paul Daniels is played by. <laughs> Gonna make you real good. Him, the one that did that song. <laughs> What's he called? Guy Pearce. No, he's not. He's still in it. Paul Daniels is still in it, <laughs> but he's not. He's a proper Hollywood actor now. Guy Pearce played somebody. Anyway, that's in the show business. <laughs> that is that, Lee. Always nice to know Paul Daniels is not an actor in, a uh, character in Neighbours. Um, but yeah, he is. Stick around, because coming up soon we've got Game of the Week. Just emptying his ass, bear with. No, I'm just unplugging you. You're watching Chew in the Cud. This week we're going to play a game of Lazy Susan's Musical Roulette. And this is one for our, our gaseous Lee. So off you pop. Don't. don't. <laughs> game of the Week. And in this game, Lee's going to spin his Lazy Susan pick out a musical question from one of the many decades that he has in front of him and then I have to try and get it right. So your choices are, we've got pop, 80s, soundtracks and rock. But what will they land on? Who knows? I shall spin the Lazy Susan. Ooh, it is soundtracks. Don't do Jurassic Park. Who composed the music for Star Wars? I don't have a clue at all of the answer to the question. What's that one? E.T. Yes, thank you, Gallery. <coughs> so come on then, who composed the music no, for Star Wars? I did. I sang it as you were doing E.T. No, but who composed no. it? So I sang the answer as you were doing no, E.T. No, that wasn't the answer, you just sang the theme, you sang the theme tune. The theme tune. Um, um, but who, 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 who composed that theme tune? I have no f***ing idea who composed the song to the Star Wars songs. It was John Williams. Oh, John Williams. I don't know who he is. But that's what I was doing, I sang that, but you two were doing E.T. Spinning it's it. a different... Thing altogether. Come on, I need to lube up my um, my lazy Susan. It's quite lube silly. up my lazy um, Susan. <laughs> this is eighties. Okay. So, no, name the five members of New Kids on the Block. Oh 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 oh. Oh, oh okay, it's one of those names. So it's oh 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 oh
oh, oh. Oh, oh. Now what are the names? What are the names of them? What are the names of the gentlemen that were in it? Five of them. You, Drew, Barney McGrew, Cuffbit, Dibble and Grub. No. Humpton. You want to have a, have a go at all? AJ. No. Jason. <laughs> no. Mark. Let's take that, I think you're naming. Tyrone. Tyrone? Methuselah. No. No, did you give up? No, I'm going to give up. No, you're still Grenade. going. Um, Simon. No. Alvin. Theodore. No. Not the chipmunks. Um, Jay. <sighs> AJ. Bob. Ralph. Simon. And the Bond. Shall I just tell you? Yeah. So we've got Danny. No. He was the one that looked like Herbert Munster. Then there was Joey. He was the little cute one with the curly hair. Then there was John. He was the gay one. And then there was Jordan. He had the high-pitched voice. And then there was Donny. Donny Wahlberg. Donny Osmond? No, Donny Wahlberg. Oh. Um, just need to point this out that, that they came out when it was very, very small. Very, very small. Not far away, small. Okay. I shall spin again. Okay. Oh, I've been in a bit. Oh, I can feel the wind from it now. So you sure it's not from your arse? No. Oh. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh. Oh, it is in the middle. Oh. Between soundtracks and the 80s. Oh, bollocks. Um, soundtracks, please. Mm. Which 1942 film featured the song As Time Goes By? Casablanca. Oh! That is right. You that is must a classic. remember this. A kiss is still a kiss on all of my thighs. Do, do, do. Fellatio is always welcome as time goes by. Right. <laughs> and when to. <laughs> pop. Let's have a little bit of pop. Okay, so. Ooh, what was Ed Sheeran's first number one single? <laughs> it wasn't that. No, um, <laughs> Ed Sheeran's first number was it the A Team? No, it was Lego it, House. It was what? Lego House. No, it's one of those era songs, though, isn't it? I don't recall this as Sing. Oh yeah, yeah, Sing. How did that go? Sing. Okay. <clears throat> I, I remember the A Team because I, I once went to a wedding where they played that as their first dance. And it's a song about um, class A drug use and someone dying. Oh, people don't understand these they things, don't though, do they? Lyrics. Yeah, too, too, too much spin on rock. Not <clears> it doesn't give a shit. I don't care. How old? Uh, how old was the Who drummer Keith Moon? When he died in 1978. 74. Stones, The Who, The Beatles, The Rolling Who. Um, <laughs> that will never, ever get old. <laughs> the Stones, The Beatles, The Rolling Who. Um, <laughs> um, no, he wasn't. Oh, okay. Considerably younger. Was he? Want to have another guess? Three. Three. No, Mike, he wasn't three. He was 32. Wasn't far off. Had a three in it. Mm, I don't know who that is anyway. He was dead, isn't he? He died while you were working down the pit. Pop. I love the way you have to read the card upside down, don't you? <clears throat> Farrell Williams and Ron who? F Farrell Williams. <laughs> no. Is it not Pharrell? Pharrell, is it? Is that Farrell. how the kids say it? <laughs> Pharrell. 
and <laughs> Liam. Um, <laughs> it's not Daryl with a P. <laughs> I'll just say it. Farrell. <laughs> Farrell. Farrell. Farrell Williams. Farrell Williams. And yeah. Robin Theeks. <laughs> Blurred lines cost oh. them 7.4 million in a lawsuit. Who was the artist they allegedly copied? Ooh. Now, because it's had a couple of lawsuits about it, because it's not. Because it was fact, a hideous, it was a horrible, horrible song. misogynistic yeah, piece it, of that's filth. A song about rape. Um, I think it's more of who they stole the, the yeah, actual that's tune what I'm trying, from. I can't remember the tune now. Was it was it sort of like Prince? It's sophisticated. No, I don't know it. Um, no, it wasn't. It was somebody much more classic. Frank Sinatra? No. I don't know. It was Marvin Gaye. Oh. So they must have sampled the... It was the hey, hey, hey that they were doing. Oh, was it? Yeah. Horrible song. Horrible song. It is. It was awful. Do you want one more? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is in the middle. Oh. Soundtrack or 80s? Soundtracks. I do so well with those. Oh, you might get this. It's a bit modern. The 2013 movie, the 2013, great, my God, yeah, the 2013 movie, The Great Gatsby, featured the song "Young and Beautiful" by which artist? Some of those hip ones, and I couldn't sing a single song that she's ever done. How is it? So it's not Billie Holiday, <laughs> Eartha Kitt. No, it's nobody like that. She's no, because like, you, you know who they are. Um. I don't even know what else she's ever sung. I write down at all. Rihanna. <clears throat> no, it was Lana Del Rey. Oh, Lana Del Rey? I don't know her. Uh, put the records on. No, that wasn't know. Lana Del Rey. That I was. Um, a lot, though. I don't know who that was, but it wasn't Lana Del Rey. <laughs> Girl, put your records on. Give me a hit your bar. <laughs> well, that's a yes. I think we'd say carried away by the music then. Getting carried away by something. Well, stick around because after this break, it's Craft on a Stick. Oh, fuck it. Crafty Queens. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's time we celebrate our lives as we enjoy Crafty Queens. Celebrate good times, come on, boo 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 doo. That's what we're going to do today, Mike, but in craft form. Okay. Do you, have you ever been to an aquarium? I have been to an aquarium. Have you, have you, have you admired the jellyfish? In the mm -hmm. jellyfish I'm not tank? a massive fan of the jellyfish. Are you not? No. Ooh, you know when they like they kind of like light them from beneath and they're all glowy and ooh. Are you uh, thinking about lanterns? No. When you go to and they're, they're like jellyfish and they're like going bloop, bloop. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. We're gonna we're gonna attempt to recreate that. Okay. Using a plastic bottle, straws, mm -hmm. and paper clips. It'll be okay. so all things that will end up in the sea to kill the jellyfish. Yes. yes, but you know, you, we would have to say that these these are things that all, should all be recycled sensibly and responsibly once one has finished enjoying the, um, the the effect that they give. So you you have before you, Mike, a, a ordinary plastic drinks water bottle uh -huh. filled with water, yeah. and there's some like little pebbles at the bottom. Ah, oh. yeah. What we're going to do for you've also got you've got some some pens that are sort of like they can use to write on um, windows and stuff. What are you doing? I'm just noticing there's floaty bits in my water. It's probably just a bit of flob. It add, it'll add to the... Um, I'm not going to ask you to drink it, so, you know, chill. Okay, anyway, yes. So I've got I've got the bottle of water. I've got okay. some, some, so some we're not going to do it pens. on the inside because there's water on the inside. So on the outside, uh -huh. just draw some, like, um, shape of, like... Underwater plants. 
Was there, was there a bit of laughter from the gallery then? There's always a bit of laughter. I can quite happily go back to something to do with the bird. You can make them... I kind of gone for like seaweedy type ones. Like it's going to be like a little aquarium inside a bottle. Okay. Okay. So have you done that? Yeah. Okay. Now you can chew. Are you drawing something phallic on it, Mike? No. What have you drawn? Oh, a starfish. Okay. All right. All right. A starfish. So, right. We're going to make. We're going to make the inhabitants of the um, aquarium. So you've got. You've got some straws there. Yeah. So pick any any colour straw that you like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you're gonna because these are you know they've got the little like thingy bit there. The bit yeah. Yeah. The articulation. Articulation. Stretch it out. Yeah. And then fold it. Yeah. Like that. We do a straw pedo. A what? Where you put your your straw in the bottle of an apple pop and use that to release the air pressure. No, no. no okay. So then you got a pair of scissors. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna chop kind of like the long bit and a little bit of the so you've got like a tiny straw bent in half like that okay yeah then you're gonna take some you've got some um paper clips yeah <laughs> you can match them to the color of your straw okay you can do whatever color you want i'm not here to control you okay do what you like and what you're gonna do is your first paper clip yeah you're going to stick it um up your ass. So you're gonna kind of like connecting them. I can't remember how I did it. Yeah, I can't remember how I did it. This, oh, this is awkward. Oh no, right, right. So like that, can you see? What? You're joining them together like that. So I'm putting the paper clip. To get, yeah, in it so that it, it, it pulls them together. So like that? Yeah. And then what you're gonna do is, with another paper clip, uh -huh. at the bottom of the first paper clip, link that through. So you're getting a little tail like that. Can you right, see? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for two. You can go for two or three. Right, I've done that. Okay, now we've got about three. So you're gonna repeat that with a different coloured straw. Let's put that one to one side. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Have a yellow one. And you just, well, I'm doing yellow one too. You're just going to repeat that. Said I'm doing a yellow one too. Are you? Yeah. This is thrilling. It is, isn't it? I've genuinely forgotten again how I did it. That goes there. So just for the people at home to understand what it is Lee's doing, you've got two ends. Two ends, that end and that end on a paper clip, and you just want to make sure that each end is going through into a tube. Yeah. <laughs> How many of these do I have to do? Three. I've done three. Have we done three already? Yeah. It's linking paper clips. That was not... that was quick. Right, because literally all you do to link a paper clip is you push that bit through that bit. Yeah, but it was, it's quite hard. No, it's not. It's done. Oh, so I've made... I've, it never I've, worked in office before. We're linking paper clips while you're talking to someone. I'm going to have to do one more. Just going to have to do one more. Because you've done three or you're doing four? I've done three. I've only done two. All right, okay. I'm going to make that a little bit littler. Little, littler. Okay. Do, 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 do. And I might, I might do white. White tail. Okay. Come on! Oh, okay, that did that one quite quick. Right, so when you've got... Um, I made a fetching chain with the paper clips while you were... I'm just right. So you've got a little black marker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're going to give each of your... These are little jellyfish. Two little dots for eyes at the top. Do jellyfish have eyes? These do. Just give them a little bit of personality. Look at that. Hello, Mike. I'm a little, I'm a little jellyfish. A little bit of an eye on there. A little bit of 
bit of an eye on there. You done that? Yeah. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna plop your little jellyfish creatures uh -huh. into a bottle of water. In you go. In you go. <laughs> and when you've done that, yeah. pop the lid on. Make sure it's secure. Uh-huh. Okay. And then if you squeeze the bottle, nothing happens. You might need to have a little bit of air in there. Yeah, it doesn't work, Mike. What is it they're supposed to do? They're supposed to sink up and down. Do they not have to be in... So what you're trying to do there is you're trying to make it so that the the buoyancy is equal. Well, I think you'll agree another successful crafty queens. Are you, are you are you trying to make it do it a different way? I'm just going to give it a little bit more weight because it's the it's the Archimedes principle where the weight and the volume of air, water that it displaces with air. It, did, it didn't say on the, on the on the thing I grabbed this off. It didn't say what? To add weight or anything. It just said do it like this and then go. No. See, at least I've got some layers to mine. Yeah. So I've got one at the bottom there, two, three at the top, and I've got a starfish. Yeah, it's, I've put an extra one. It's not. It's too heavy or not heavy enough. Oh, everyone's a bloody critic, aren't they? So I've done a start. See, like my little seaside scene. It's quite nice. Yeah, good. I'm yeah. glad you approve. I mean, for a segment that was only supposed to last a couple of weeks through the bloody pandemic, I think you should be bloody grateful that I'm dragging, bringing the quality that I am every week. <laughs> if you can't get any peen or any vagine. Probably because you're trying to stick paper clips to straws and dick them in a bottle of water. I'll repeat that. If you can't get any peen or any vagine, be a crafty queen. One of mine's just floating at the bottom now. Yeah. Just resting. Dead. Shake it. This looks like a pile of crap inside a bottle. You see, you were doing wiggly lines. I didn't realise it were wiggly lines. I was doing sea creatures. Oh, you know, whatever, whatever, you know. So I, I've ended up doing a starfish. That's nice. And then a formation of rocks. Yes. And then some clams. Yeah. Mm. They don't look like penises and vaginas at all. No, they don't. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what did you hope for then? It was a gurgle. Oh dear. Look, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at the Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And if you want to find us on YouTube and all those kind of places, just search for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Do 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 do